Hey guys, it's Greg. Look, if you're into self-improvement or you're trying to succeed in life, I wanna tell you today that you need to start blaming yourself first. So I wanna talk about this idea because of this recent spate of TV shows and movies that are failing due to what a lot of people wanna call going woke, or what I like to call performative diversity, but really we're talking about the same thing. A group of hollow, half-baked, subversive ideas that fail is not anything new or groundbreaking. Talentless hacks have always tried to find easy success by writing trends in a half-hearted, pandering way. What is new about this fresh crop of failures is that their creators have fallen on blaming the audience as their go-to tactic for explaining their artistic impotence. Recently, actor and writer Billy Eichner was publicly very upset when his new movie, Bros, didn't do as well as he expected at the box office. If you haven't heard about this one, it's a rom-com, but there's a huge twist. Are you sitting down? Hold on. It's gay. Very edgy. It's not much of a twist. All rom-coms are gay. Am I right, fellas? I don't know why I even said that. I love rom-coms, especially The Holiday. Have you guys seen The Holiday? It's got a great cast. Uh, the girls don't like their lives and they switch places and then she helps the old guy find his confidence and he helps her find Moxie. Shit's heartwarming as fuck. So the problem is rom-coms typically don't sell out theaters. They don't have a massive audience. Gay films have an even smaller audience owing to the fact that about three to 4% of the population is gay. So a gay rom-com is naturally going to have an even smaller slice of an already small audience. And the box office numbers reflect that. Despite this obvious flaw, Eichner decided he was going to expose the real villain on Twitter, straight people. Turns out he's right. Over at the weekly Straight People Society meeting, we unanimously decided to quietly boycott this movie. Uh, this is the exact same society where we voted to try to make adult Lunchables cool by giving it a fancy French name and putting it on a wooden board. Don't act like I didn't see you over there eating all the shark cut, the, uh... The shortcut. Shortcut. It definitely wasn't that people just didn't find this concept interesting. It definitely was not that audiences are sick and tired of these movies whose only selling point is, hey, there's gay stuff. Seriously, these people are like 90s morning radio shock jocks. The guy was suspanky. Would you throw him out of bed? Are we cool? Are we interesting? There's a gay sex scene. Isn't that cool? Richard was here on Monday and you said, I want to smell your balls. Look, I'm sorry, guys, but the shock factor has worn off and audiences are waking up to the fact that you spent all your energy pandering to the Twitter and Tumblr crowd that you didn't have any left over to actually write a story worth watching. It also definitely wasn't that some people, me, will never forgive Eichner for being the worst character on Parks and Rec because shouting in a weird voice is not comedy. Nope. Wasn't any of that. It's that we secretly hate gays and refuse to see the movie out of pure spite. Never mind what this implies about the hubris of thinking the audience owes you their attention. We can and will make an entire video about that crazy mindset. As usual, we're gonna learn from the mistakes of others, like these creatively bankrupt individuals, and we're gonna show why blaming yourself is always the most productive action by looking at the pros of doing so and the cons of blaming other people. Let's talk about the good stuff first. When you blame yourself, it automatically leads to a mindset of service. If you're making a product or doing any kind of job that is for the interest of somebody else, like making a show or a movie, or just doing your day job at your company, you need to be focused on the audience that you're trying to serve. But for many people, Eichner included, their ego gets in the way of them doing a good job because they make it about themselves and not about the service that they're providing. Who did they even make bros for? What about your relationships, your work, your community? Are you taking actionable steps to serve other people or do you think everything should be about you? See, when you blame yourself, it reminds you that you're actually not doing this for you, you're doing it for other people. It also focuses you on what you can do, on actions you can take. When you blame somebody else, where is there to go? You've assigned blame, now what? Job's done. Nothing can be improved because it's completely out of your hands. When you take ownership of the problem, you realize it's just you. Nobody's coming to help, Nobody's gonna fix it but you. It requires you to take tangible steps to fix the problem. This mixture of self-responsibility and non-self-service really is the key to success. Not only those things, but blaming yourself actually reduces your stress about any given situation. We tend to stress about things for two main reasons. They're out of our control, we don't fully understand them. When you blame yourself and take control, 
you're taking the power back in the situation. You're not stressed because somebody else has control. Somebody else is holding you back. You are the one making the plans. Are you stressed because you don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow? Take responsibility and make a list of the most likely things to happen and make a list of the things that you would do in the event they do occur. In this way, you are defeating stress by taking away the two main causes of it. But you know what? Maybe you're not a positive reinforcement person. Maybe you need to see how terrible it looks when you blame other people. Let's take a look at Mindy Kaling's new project, Velma. HBO Max has two Scooby-Doo projects coming out and they're trying to drum up interest by changing some things about the original cast. In their new Halloween movie special, Velma is finally confirmed to be a lesbian. Hmm. Hmm. Kaling's version is likely to be one as well, with the show's plot describing a love quadrangle between the four sleuths. The show's cast is also palette swapped for representation. Representation just means marketing. You're just being sold to. In the trailer for the show, new Velma is seen mocking and attacking the audience for having any kind of opinion about this obvious race pandering other than zealous worship and awe. We saw the same thing in She-Hulk with the main character being extremely clever for predicting what people were not going to like about this horrible show. How's it working out for you? What, being clever? The problem is this isn't actually clever or a real argument. It's just a lazy dodge via straw man. This really shouldn't be surprising coming from Kaling, however, with her praise of the new vice president being that, quote, she looks like us. Clearly, Mindy only cares about skin color, which feels regressive, but what do I know? The point here is that nobody saw that trailer and thought, wow, she looks cool. It was petty and spiteful. It's obvious that these shows are written by people who have a genuine antipathy toward the original audience and they get some kind of weird pleasure from altering them. They really don't understand what makes the thing good and they just make a shittier version of it. When it inevitably fails, they have taken to blaming this vague group of trolls for everything that goes wrong. Are, are the trolls in the room with us right now. It never looks good. Nobody ever praises these people for standing up to the trolls and the haters because it's an obvious diversion from their terrible product. It looks weak because it is weak. Likewise, back to you, nobody really cares who you blame for the things going wrong in your life. Your boss, your ex, your parents. Have you ever met one of these people that blames everybody else and you think, well, mm, seems like there's a common thread here. You just look bad when everything is everybody else's fault. But really, it's a gigantic waste of your time. Seriously, when is the last time that something in your life got better because you sat around blaming everybody else? And, and I'm sure that it felt good for a minute, fooling yourself into believing that there's just nothing you could have done to change things. The world is out to get you. But in the end, it didn't change shit, did it? The last thing I want to add is to blame yourself also for your expectations. Clearly, Eichner allowed himself to believe that Bros was going to be this massive blockbuster hit. And ultimately, it's his fault for allowing himself to believe that. You've got to be realistic about the situation that you're in and the actions it's going to require to move it in the direction you want it to go. Eichner likely fell into the same trap that so many people do, caught up in their little bubble echo chambers like Twitter or Hollywood, where everybody is constantly saying and thinking the same things. We talked about this recently with how Twitter absolutely warps the way people see the world and they think certain things are much more important than they really are. If you want to see why Twitter is so horrible and you need to leave it immediately, check this video out right here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.